Hi everyone, um, I'm Kaylee, a bookseller at Women and Children First. We are one of just a few feminist bookstores left and we're so thankful you're spending some of your day with us to celebrate Octavia Rahim and her new book, Pause, Rest, Be, Stillness, Practices for Courage in Times of Change. We begin our virtual events as we begin our events in store with the land acknowledgement Please join me in acknowledging that the land on which the bookstore stands is the occupied, unceded territory of the Peoria, Potawatomi, and Miami people. We encourage you to learn more about land acknowledgments and about the rightful owners of the land where you are viewing tonight's event. In just a few moments, I'll introduce Octavia. We'll start with moments of reading and meditation and then move to questions. If you'd like to ask a question, there's an ask a question um, button at the bottom of your screen. Um, questions will uh, be in that box, so they'll be easy to find later in the event. So please put your questions there, as well as please um, use the chat, respond, you know, say hello. Um, we love that interaction. There's also um, the handy buy the book button that you'll see um, below the video as well. That will link to the Women and Children First website. We ship nationwide, we offer curbside contactless pickup, and we're now also reopened for Insta browsing and pickups. Um, so please, you know, if you are able, support tonight's event um, and buy the book. Um, the event will run about an hour. And we'll begin with our introductions. Um, Octavia Rahim is the, a mother, author, yoga teacher, and practitioner, and activist. Her work as a yoga professional focuses on practical tools to teach individuals how to manage stress, anxiety, and fatigue through yoga and meditation in a way that is accessible to all levels, abilities, and restorative to the nervous system. Her work has been featured in Yoga Journal, Mantra Magazine, well and Good, CNN, WXIA, and Atlanta Magazine. Um, we are so happy to have her this afternoon. Thank you so much. Welcome, Octavia. Hi, you all. Thank you women and children first. And thank you, Kaylee, for that introduction. Um, I like to pause for a moment and give you an opportunity to set your space, to gather what you need for this um, afternoon of pausing, to gather what you need for to support rest, refuge, and respite. And so that might mean that you want to close your door. <laughs> it might mean that you want to grab a pillow or a blanket or a journal. It might mean that you don't have on socks and you want to put them on. But let's take 30 seconds to a full minute to get what you need or to just settle into the physical space that you are in just a little bit more. So I'll pause here and give you a chance to get what you need or just give you a chance to arrive in the room you're in. Just because we're home doesn't mean it's, you know, the transition online was easy. And then if you're still gathering your things, begin to move at half speed, you don't have to rush. Take the time that you need. So this afternoon, evening, I want to read to you so you can experience the book in my voice. And it's really important to me that the text uh, lives, right? And that the text is embodied, that Paul's recipe is experienced, right? I believe that we can talk about rest until the ends of the earth. Right? We can intellectualize anything to the ends of the earth. And at some point to, to really uh, reap the benefits of whatever it is we're theorizing, right? Especially if it's a practice and to really uh, taste the full fruit and nectar 
that pausing and resting promises our being, we actually have to go lay down, right? We actually have to settle into stillness. We actually have to be quiet to hear the revelations that rest promises to reveal. And those are a lot of words to say that for me, as I share this book with the world, it's very important for you to experience rest and not just talk about it, listen to it, ask questions about it, or read about it. I want you to experience that. And so to that end, I'll be reading to you, but I invite you to, as I'm reading to you, to lay down, <laughs> to remember if you had the, the gift of growing up with someone reading to you, how precious is that, right? To have someone read to you as you simply rest. And then I'll guide us through a, a more, formalized resting practice. So to start, I like to know, just as we kind of cast this circle, where you are joining from, if you know whose indigenous land it is, please share it in the chat, right? So where are you, whose land? And if you could answer this one question, what part of you is most in need of rest? Please share that in the chat. Where are you? So I can get a sense of the community, the vastness of the space we're sharing. Where are you? And what part of you is in need of rest? And when I when I answer this question, what part of me is in need of rest? I Accept the first answer that comes. Right? There might be a second and third. I might even have questions or be curious about what came. But what part of you is in need of rest? And then as you begin to see what people are, you begin to see what part of them is most in need of rest. See if there is some resonance that you start to realize almost immediately, even though you can't see. We can't see each other. You can see me, but you can't see each other. If there is some sense of, okay, someone else is tired in me the way I am too. Another way I think about this part of me that is in need of rest is sometimes it might be an identity. <laughs> it might be a role you are, a beloved role, but one that sometimes you get, you know, fatigued from being in that role. Hmm. Yes. So hearts and minds in need of rest. Menopause brain. Yes, two of your menopause brain. That's real. My soul. Nervous system. Guarding boundaries. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> the language of boundaries, right? to um, actually begin to come into practices of rest. We have to create some boundaries, especially when we live in a culture, society, and so many systems that are predicated um, or are privileged, right? Productivity um, over people, <laughs> right? Production over um people doing over being yeah my nervous system my black mama body needs rest the part of me that is grieving my mother himself thank you all for your honesty <clears throat> and sharing and those of you who did share and those of you who didn't share maybe you read something in the chat that you said right on to that you said a man or a woman to right So take a seat that feels easy of our lay down, right? I need rest from capitalism. Right? We all probably do, right? And go ahead and lay down or ease back in your chair. I just want to read to you. And um, if you notice you go to settle into stillness or you go to settle into rest and your body doesn't want to do that, right? Because here's the thing, our mind can be like, I really need rest. 
<laughs> and then the body's like, I can't be still right now though. What I do in that instance is I walk around the room, I move my arms, I shrug my shoulders. I give my body the movement it might need for me to settle into then stillness, right? Okay, got that? <laughs> so you can lay down right now. I'm gonna start reading in about one minute. But I'm honoring and acknowledging that sometimes body doesn't wanna be still. So then move, right? Sometimes it's mind saying, uh-uh, what are you doing? <laughs> right? And the body's like, I'm so exhausted, I have to lay down. In that case, the words are listening to the sound of my voice will become the mantra that settles your mind, okay? Okay, so what I wanna share with you all before we go into some deeper rest is the introduction from Paul Dresby. <clears throat> Stillness practices the courage in times of change. And I want to honor that it takes courage to rest, right? In a world where many of us are rewarded for <laughs> moving over the edge of our own capacity for how close to burnout we can get without actually breaking down. It takes courage to say, no, I will not be interacting with my body, with my being, with my existence in that way. It also takes courage to be still when we are deeply passionate and when we have personally experienced and witnessed other people um, experience profound injustice and things that we know are in need of change, it takes courage to say, I don't have to run myself raggedy, as my grandmother would say, to impact change, right? It takes courage when everything is firing off in you and there's a profound sense of urgency to say, wait a minute, <laughs> let me feel the ground beneath my feet. Let me find a central point of groundedness, of rootedness, and let me actually slow down and then move forward. And I want to honor that. And so that's why the subtitle of this book is Stillness Practices for Courage in Times of Change. Because when we're navigating and moving through change, right, what we think we have to do is rush right? And I want us to consider what if shifting to a slower pace, even settling to, into some stillness, is a way to deeply impact the change that we want to see and be, okay? So I want to start with the introduction. I hope you're laying down. I hope you have a, a nice pillow under your head, and I hope that you are in the warmest blanket, okay? In many years, in many ways, I've been frontlining my life the last few years. I've been in the trenches of my own being. I charged ahead over many landscapes and vast fields. The fields of endings and the confusion and clinging that often accompanies them. The landscape of new beginnings and the uncertainty and excitement that come along with them. I've rushed through and forced something, anything, to be next. I also lingered at the place in between that liminal space, that point that is not an ending or a beginning. It's the edge of both. So much of it felt like a battle, and I've yielded a formidable sword against it all. I've been a devoted warrior, hoping that every fight strengthens me for my future. I've been a dedicated student, trying to trust that no matter how challenging or painful a lesson is, it transforms into healing wisdom for me. I have faced inner and outer enemies who were Goliath. In the face of giants, my five foot one self didn't back down or look for an escape. For so long, I've relied solely on the trinity of hard work, grit, and relentlessness. This holy trinity has served me well and, and at the same time, left me weary and tired. 
my little sling shot is broken. The handle of my sword is worn. I put down my armor in this place of bone deep exhaustion. I surrender and lay down. There's a time and place to push, maybe even hustle and grind. I've always lived my life in that way. I've always lived my life in that way. And from that place, perhaps you have to. Yet here I am in a new place. To access the wisdom needed now, I must be still. A movement is coming and first we must be still. Now is no ordinary moment in time. Now is a place of startling individual and collective endings. Now is the space between, now is the space before something else becomes. Now is both a promise and fulfillment of fresh beginnings. The sacred cycle of being human seems to be speeding up. For many, we assume the remedy is to match that cycle or that speed. As we become more and more exhausted, anxious, and disillusioned with trying to keep up with an inhumane pace, it is apparent, it's apparent that all of the battling, the swiftness, and the forging ahead brought me, brought us collectively to this moment. This moment where we are perhaps finally ready to listen for a new rhythm and tune. Listen, we are descending into quiet, being thrown into it, really. I hear a sound so striking in a silence that it has displaced us all. It has put us in our place, human. Be still. We can no longer outrun this without collectively slowing down. We cannot profit from this without the bottom meticulously falling out. We cannot package, sell, or otherwise capitalize on this without paying with our very own lives. We can no longer live in the way that so many of us have long, long learned to be individual, grinding, hustling, calculating, competitive, consumed with work away from our families all day while saying family matters. We cannot outrun this. The only way to beat this is to stop now and still. Some of us may lose. There can be no screaming match here. If we keep yelling over everything and everybody, we will miss it. So stop. Really, really stop. Go read. Go write. Go rest. Go take care. Go paint. Go dance. Go cry, go laugh, go love, go sit in the rain, go breathe, go reconnect to the source of your strength, go reconnect to the true source of your strength. Cook at home, call your elders, pray, love, be transformed. Please stop spinning. Please stop spinning. Please stop scrambling to be productive in the way that mattered yesterday. Honor the lessons of yesterday and let everything else about that recent yet distant past fall away. Something is happening now that demands you, me, we are present for it. If we keep going like nothing is happening, we will miss it. It 
being the world that is ending and the one that is coming. It being this space in between. I've seen glimpses of it in my dreams. Beloved, it gets worse. My God, it does. It gets worse. We get better. My God, we get better. And then glory, hallelujah. It, it gets better as we get better. It gets better as we get better. It gets so much better. Eridati Roy reminds us that another world is not only possible. She is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. We are descending into quiet. Listen. So wherever you are, however you're resting, take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale out with a sigh. So let us descend into quiet and rest that we might awaken and rise and have space and opportunity to listen to this another world that is possible, but that Arundhati Roy reminds us we can only hear on a quiet day. So you can continue to recline or lay down. In the book, I teach three poses. One is Shavasana, where you're lying on your back with a lot of support under your knees and head. One is resting on your side, which many of us might sleep that way. And so you're welcome to take those postures and the last pose that I teach in Paul's Rest is a little bit more complex. It's supported child's pose. If you know it, you can spend the rest of the time that I'm kind of guiding you into a practice in that pose. You can also just sit, right? <clears throat> if you're like me and sitting at a desk, if I were in this experience, I'd just put my head down to give my body a different shape to rest in, okay? So lots of options. Just make sure you're comfortable. And if you feel safe in the room you're in, in the space you're in, safe to close your eyes, close your eyes. If closing your eyes isn't part of how you settle down, right, then you just keep your eyes open, but let your eyelids get heavy. Some of our greatest um, creations, <laughs> some of our greatest solutions, deepest wisdom are in this field of stillness and quiet, waiting for us to settle down enough and meet it there, or for it to meet us where we are. Right. <clears throat> and so a lot of times when we're meeting um, something that we're like, I got to figure this out, an urgency, a problem, a project, anything, you can fill in a blank with anything, we're like, I got to do something about it right now. A lot of times what we do is meet it with the same energy that it came to us. And, you know, Einstein says you can't really solve a problem from the same vibrational level of frequency that created the problem. And <laughs> as one who takes action in the world, I really realized that meeting, so I was a public school teacher for a very long time, and I realized that meeting the cadence and the chaos and the tempo of what was happening with more of the same beget more of the same. And that if I really wanted to interrupt some of these systems and these challenges and these problems, I actually had to shift my cadence, <laughs> shift the way I engage, right? And so rest disrupts so much. And it's a place of respite and healing, which we need. 
So eyes are closed. We'll just see what we hear in the quiet space here. I want to start with noticing the physical body. Notice your feet. And what I mean, I'm just going to say different body parts. I literally just mean pay attention. <laughs> Put your attention there. So pay attention to your feet. Notice your feet. Notice your ankles. Notice your shins, your calves. Notice your knees. Notice your thighs. Notice your hips. Notice your right leg. Notice your left leg. Notice your right foot. Notice your left foot. Notice your glutes. Notice lower back. Middle back, upper back, shoulders, back of neck, back of head, top of head. Notice face, notice neck, notice shoulders, notice right shoulder, notice left shoulder, notice right bicep. Notice left bicep. Notice right tricep. Notice left tricep. Right elbow. Left elbow. Right forearm. Left forearm. Right wrist. Left wrist. Right hand, left hand. Tips of right fingers, tips of left fingers. Notice the whole right arm. Notice the whole left arm. Notice the shoulders. Notice the space around the collarbones. Notice the space around the center of the chest. Notice the rib cage. Notice belly abdomen area. Notice hips. Notice glutes. Notice right thigh. Notice left thigh. Notice right knee. Notice left knee. Notice right shin and calf. Notice left shin and calf. Notice right ankle. Notice left ankle. Notice right foot. Notice left foot. Notice right toes. Notice left toes. Notice the whole right leg. 
Notice the whole left leg. Relax the toes. Relax the feet. Relax the ankles. Relax the shins. Relax calves. Relax knees. Relax thighs. Relax hips. Relax glutes. Relax lower back. Relax middle back. Relax upper back. Relax shoulders. Relax the back of the neck. Relax the back of the head. Relax the top of the head. Relax the whole face. Relax the whole face. Relax the front of the neck. Relax the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Relax the collarbone. Relax the space around the chest. Relax the rib cage. Relax the belly, abdomen. Relax the hips and glutes. Relax the thighs. Relax the knees. Relax the shins and calves. Relax the ankles. Relax the feet. Relax the toes. Feel the whole body. Completely relaxed. Relax the whole body. Totally and completely. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. The whole body is totally and completely relaxed. Bring awareness to the center of the chest. And for the next 10 breaths, let your awareness rest right at the center of the chest. You might count those breaths down and backwards so that you inhale into the center of the chest, exhale from the center of the chest, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
Then inhale from the center of the chest, exhale from the center of the chest, nine. Continue to rest awareness at the center of the chest and count the breath down and backwards. If you lose your place in the counting, just start back at the number 10. Wherever you are in the counting, let that go. And continue to let go. Let go even more. Receive this rest even more fully. And then as we descend into more quiet, the kind of quiet that allows us to hear that another way is possible, and to remember that the way it is isn't how it has to be. Nothing says it has to be this way. So as we begin to settle into, descend into that kind of quiet, keep awareness at the center of the chest and let this be your anchor or mantra. On your inhale, silently say to yourself, amazing. And on your exhale, silently say to yourself, grace. On the inhale, amazing. On the exhale, grace. So I'll be quiet for the next two full minutes. I'll still be here. In two minutes, you'll hear my voice again.
on the inhale is amazing. On the exhale is grace. Begin to let go of those words. And simply notice and feel. Receive and be replenished in your mind. Replenished in your body. Let there be a revival in your heart. Notice the sound of your breath. And notice any other sounds that you can hear right now. Notice if there are sounds in the room or beyond the building you're in. Begin to wiggle fingers and toes or just notice the body first and then start to bring some movement back into the body, your body. And then if you're all the way lying down, you'll just bend your knees and roll onto one side. If you were resting on your side, you'll just stay there for a moment. And just silently ask yourself, what are you ready to end? Just silently ask yourself, what what am I ready to end? It might be a belief system. It might be a, a way of being. It might be a way you're being interacted with or allowing yourself to be interacted with. What am I ready to end? It might be something bigger than yourself. And take awareness back to your heart and silently ask yourself, what am I ready to begin? What did I hear in the quiet, right? What am I ready to end and what am I ready to begin? Take one more moment where you are. And as you do, and as we prepare to sit up and to come out of this restful space, I want to to read the next to the last page of the book to you from Pause and Speak. It's a prayer for our beginnings. Great spirit of beginnings, thank you. Thank you for meeting us here. We ask you to bless our beginnings and feel the way ahead with grace, with ease and space to rest for a spell of time. We've come a mighty long way to start. We promise to remember who and what came before us, to honor the lessons from the roads we've traveled. Teach us to not despise our beginnings, even if they are humble as dirt because all good and worthy things rise from the ground. Every blossom was once a tiny little thing in need of sunlight and water, just like us. We pour libations from the back of our eyes onto the altar of this beginning. We create a stream that stretches through the world and doesn't let us forget that every minute someone exhales for the last time, and someone inhales for the first time. From the pulpit of our hearts, we lift our voices toward the divine sanctuary of your ear. We dig down into our souls to offer up this old hymn as we face something brand new. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand through the storm, through the night, 
lead me on to the light. Take my hands, lead me home. Now, wherever you are, take a deep breath in. Exhale out. And the next time you inhale, come back up to sitting more upright, right? So if you went all the way down to sit up on your bed or your couch or in your favorite chair. And I want to give you, you know, maybe a minute or two to journal or to free write anything that comes to your heart or your mind. And so what that looks like is you literally, if you have any paper nearby or you can open a tab, open a tab in your computer and just start to free write in journal. And so we'll take just another minute to write, to free write, to draw, to stretch, to come back into a more waking state. And I want to share with you this practice of resting, of descending, as I call it also, into quiet. And then journaling is how I've written both Paul's SD and Gather is the start, is how every book I've written has been started and how the the idea that you know you now hold in your hand as a full book or you will hold in your hand as a full book was conceived in the quiet space of rest in the still space of rest right so take another minute or so just to free write and journal and you might be writing about what you're, you're ready to end you might be writing about a beginning and then in just a minute, when we hit the, the 50, we will shift to um, some questions and answers. Or you can also just share in the chat, how is that for you? How are you feeling now? Mm -hmm. So take another 30 seconds or so. If you're writing. And then if you have any comments, if you have questions, if you want to tell me how you're feeling, what that rest was like for you, or what the listening to reading was like for you, go ahead and share it in the chat. Questions, comments, just experience you want to share. We started with this question of what part of you is most in need of rest? What rested? We can answer that. We can share that in a chat too. What rested within you? It's so interesting here, right? Because all I can see is the chat. <laughs> and what I know is likely happening to about 50% of y'all is y'all still resting, right? You're laying down and you might just be looking at the ceiling or you might even be asleep. My whole body rested. My busy mind melted into stillness. My worry rested, yeah. I feel like I let go of my physical space to hear the voice of my spirit, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all a practice, right? I'm thinking about this, my worry rested for a few minutes and that few minutes then gives us fuel <laughs> to, meet, to meet whatever is next, right? And it's none of it's a static state, right? There's ebb and flow. And even when it's just maybe a minute or two, 
our bodies and nervous systems appreciate that. Loved how you let, let us into the tech space. <laughs> Plan to use that with my work team. Yeah, don't start a meeting with chaos. It doesn't have to be this way. You know, a question that has shaped my resting life or my resting practice is I look at everything. <laughs> no. And I go, does that have to be that way, right? You know, when I'm uh, approaching uh, something that feels challenging, I go, I look at what my first response is, and then I go, does it have to be that way? I just stay really curious about how else can I do this? And in the context of a work setting where we were like, okay, I only got this much time <laughs> and we might come in with chaos and then kind of just go with the flow of chaos because we're saving time. But I find when we're all kind of disheveled and distracted that we waste a lot more time than if we just say, get your water, take care of yourself, and then we'll come back in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for sharing that. that resonated with you, Sarah. I don't take for granted that, you know, just because we're what most of us are doing when we work is opening tabs that that is easier, that work has gotten easier, I think is exponentially more challenging for most of us right now. Yeah, I felt softening around my desire to know certainty. Yeah. Hmm. So thank you all so much for sharing what you experienced in rest. I find rest to be a really um, ripe and fertile place, right? It's all of these things at once. And I think about it as necessary recalibration. All right, like I'm going to put it real simple. Like I brush my teeth every day <laughs> and, and we do that for a reason, right? We're like kind of wiping away what was there. There's some buildup. And I'm like, why are we not tending to like the inner parts of our being? And also rest is for the physical body as well, right? And so I treat it like a non-negotiable and it doesn't have to be 20 to 30 minutes of like what we just did. If I have what I have is three minutes, then I let that be enough. Um, but I, I honor that I am a human being, not a machine, not a doing, right? It's one way I reclaim my humanity in this body, right? So if you have any questions about rest, about my writing process about the book will take the last few moments to do so and then um, and then we'll close out So notice right how the pause feels. The pause is a um, a place of power, right? Nothing has happened yet. So anything can happen, which is also what makes it very unsettling to be in a pause. How do you do less in the midst of suffering? Some of my, some of the suffering is what created the suffering, right? I know there's more to that question. There's clearly more to my answer. And what needs to be done? And how do I want to show up for that doing? And what allows me to show up with the fullest and deepest presence and the most wisdom and clarity <laughs> is engaging the pause first. 
right? How we started is, is an example of that, right? The chaos in our house is just the chaos of like, I'm opening my computer, I'm doing all the things. It's not equivalent to the kinds of suffering that exists within the world. It is a microcosm though. And we saw how a moment of a little bit more space to access more depth and then move into an experience together created something brand new. All right, so I really do invite everyone to consider that what what if part of the answer is less, right? Less consuming, less um, unpurposed doing, less technology. Even though here we are, right? Like, what is what if the response is less, right? And I just go back to really one of my favorite quotes is this, another world is possible. On a quiet day, we can hear her breathing, this idea of what allows us to listen more deeply so that our um, actions spring forth from, from a place that is more profound and sustainable. So for me, rest is also a sustainability practice. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> um, I hope that was helpful in some way and not to diminish the very real suffering in the world. Um, yeah. Yeah. I stay very curious about what the relationships of our overtaxed nervous system has to do with the way we um, interact with ourselves and each other and create more suffering. Not to simplify it down to if we just rested everything would, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Kat, we've been on the journey. <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here and all the other places. Thank you all. Um, what if the, the response is less? Yeah. And really to think about that with like deep curiosity, I don't think it's that simple, right? <laughs> you know, like I'm not just like, you know, I do think a lot about how overconsumption is impacts so many of the ills within the world. And, and rest is a really accessible, slow pace to practice, right? Um, so women and children first, I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be in your space and in your community and for allowing me to, to do this a different way. What I was sharing before we went live, you all, is that I don't want to talk about rest. I want people to actually rest and start to receive the gifts that exist within rest and start to receive your own questions and your own answers and your own insight and have more access to your own imagination. And I'm like, we can talk all day about that. And right now, rest is the, the practice. So thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Please purchase the book from right here. Even if you already have a copy, think of three people in your lives who need rest, who deserve rest, who might want to run from rest, but you know that they need this book and they need to rest. Think of who those three people are and hit the buy the book button and order right from here so we can support the institutions who support us, who are helping to eliminate suffering in the world. We're right here in a place that does so much. Have y'all checked out their website? They do so much to eliminate injustice and suffering in the world in just their existence. So please support women and children first here. So thank y'all so much. I really appreciate you being here on a Sunday. I appreciate everyone who logged in. I hope to see you somewhere else on my book tour, but also please support this space here today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I do think we might have one more one more question or two. Oh, okay. Time. Um, Joan is um, wondering how you address blocks in writing. 
Oh, I didn't see that question. Where is it? Or maybe I didn't see. How do I address blocks? Oh. So, <laughs> what's the quick answer? Um, I usually change. Um, I will give y'all a real answer. In this moment, I can't think of when I've experienced the writer's block. <laughs> and here's why, because when I'm experiencing a block, I know then that I'm trying to force something. And and it's why resting and then coming out and just being like, I'm going to free write right now. I'm going to see what comes is an essential part of my practice, right? And so I guess I would say go rest, go take a walk, go write, go play some music let the writing rest if there's a block, right? If there's something in the way, then shift or just lay down with it and see like, oh, what is this? <laughs> what needs to move or how do I need to move out? Um, I hope that's helpful in some way, right? And also just reframe like what is actually a block? Is this problematic right now? Maybe I just need to lay down or, or shift something I'm doing. I hope that's helpful. And then I think our last one is from Taylor T asking, what are other ways you practice being? Ooh, so my favorite way to practice being is one thing at a time. And what I mean by that is I'm here right now. But what I want you to know about my life is I have a five-year-old. So I have, you know, I have a partner and I have an online business. And part of my work is um, I rest with, corporations all over the world right so just to just i want to give you some context for the variance in my life and know who whatever i'm in front of whoever i'm in front of or like if i'm drinking this water then that's what i'm doing i focus on one thing at a time that's the essential practice right and it's truly a practice because you'll notice like god i'm on this one screen but i really want to go ahead and open this tab i want to start looking in the chat or what's that over here um, so that's that's my primary practice. Whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, whoever's in front of me, just I'm just with them. I'm just with that, and I bring myself back to that awareness as, as many times as I need to, because that's what it means to that is being right presence. Right. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, thank you everyone for joining us again. The buy the book buttons at the bottom. Um, I hope everyone has um, a restful and uh, enjoyable rest of your Sunday. Take care. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all.